Okay, so thank you everybody okay. for, for attending. The way that we're going to be running the session uh, is we'll look at the employee uh, side of things first, then from there we'll move to a manager and show, show everybody that's managers how the manager you would use the system. And then uh, lastly, we'll go into the HR executive side of things, uh, which is the people that sit you know, from a user point of view is right at the top. They've got access to everything. So um, without further ado, what you're seeing on the screen now is the employee self-service or the employee login. So each and every one of you should have a login like the following. Um, oh, Timothy, will you be okay if I maybe mute, mute your room, um, the main room there? Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Otherwise, there's a bit of an echo there. I'm hearing myself the whole time. Okay, so employee login. Um, if you guys have any questions, please raise your hands. I'll try and keep an eye out on the uh, on the side here to see if I see a raised hand. Otherwise, keep the questions until the end if possible. Okay, um, HR Simplified is a system that allows uh, employees access to a lot of their own data but also some processes things like applying for leave applying for uh, or, or submitting claims uh, if you have time and attendance that's on and on you would have a check in and a check out there's some asset management things in there there's project management so there's a bit of a of a bundle of services that's all rolled into a single um, solution or a single uh, subscription so what you're seeing now is the H is the uh, employee self-service portal it looks the same for everybody so you'll notice on the side we have a few menu items um, those will grow and become more depending on which person you're logging in as um, because obviously the more access you have the more menus there will be so from an employee point of view this is pretty much what you'll see you'll see home which is where most of your things will live you'll see most of them starts with the word my so it's my profile my finance my leave that type of thing where if you're an executive, you'll get additional uh, items like leave and claims, which is not available to an employee, um, because that would be where they process things that employees would not have access to. So most of the work you will be doing will be under home. There is one or two things under time and attendance, like for instance, my time, which is where you will submitting timesheets. Uh, and if you guys are setting up shifts, the employee can see their shifts when the next one is that type of thing. Uh, and under project management, you can have your task board where you can move your tasks around. Uh, you can also see the tasks that's been assigned to you based on the project that's been created by a project role in the system or a project manager role. Uh, and lastly, notifications. Just as, this is around notifications. Same as what you would have at the top here. Uh, it's just a larger implementation of the same thing. So let's go to the home section. We can talk quickly about what employees would do in the system. So if you log in, and keep in mind this is fully responsive, so you can use this on your phone, um, especially the, the, the dashboard part. It's, there's a lot of effort that went into making this mobile friendly. There is an Android app as well, and you are welcome to go download that from the Android store. It doesn't give you access to everything, but it does do the basic leave claims and check in and check out uh, with location-based services as well. Um, I do also need to just add to this, and it is something you guys would see as well. Um, when you log into the system the first time, there will be a pop-up that comes up at the top, which asks you to share your location. Um, the op there's option for yes and no. Uh, if you say yes, we do capture the log in and log out or check in and check out locations based on your Wi-Fi connection, uh, or if you're on your phone, the mobile location. Um, it is pretty accurate, um, and it is used in the management of the system. Uh, we can't force you to say yes it is an option and because of poppy we do need to inform you that's why there would be a pop-up that that warns you that it is being tracked it's only the check-in and check-out locations not movements around with the app okay so back to dashboard uh, this is where you would see most of your information you would see how many days you have available so if you depending on your annual days uh, your sick days your family if the company decides not to use one of these specific ones, they would make it a zero and you would see zero. So which means you wouldn't then apply for that one. Uh, but you're welcome to use your annual days, sick days, depending on how the system is set up by your HR administrator. Um, you can also then start here on the side under the control panel. We can apply for leave. We can choose what type of leave that would be. So if I was feeling sick today, I would pick sick days or sick leave. I can also say if it's half day or not. If I say it's half day, I need to inform the system if it's morning or afternoon. Uh, I need to add a start date and an end date. They are required fields. And I need to add a note. The note could be something simple. Uh, just like I'm feeling sick today. And this note goes with the request to your 
your manager. Uh, so the manager would be able to see uh, what the reasoning behind your leave is. Uh, and on this little block at the bottom is where you can dro either drop a document as an attachment or you can just uh, click on it and actually open up your file explorer to add an additional um, note. It might be a sick note. Uh, this would also work on your phone um, and you can then actually take a photo and attach the photo with the request that goes off to the manager. So from an employee point of view, that is how you would submit leave. If you had to submit a... a um, Let's quickly mute this one. Um, so from a claim point of view, um, it would be pretty much the same process. We have an overtime and an expense claim. You can choose which one. So from an overtime point of view, it would be an amount of hours. You would say when the overtime started and when it ended. So it might be over midnight uh, or it would be on the same day. Uh, amount of hours. You'll have some kind of note around why that overtime was required. Maybe your manager asked you to work overtime. And once again, you got the opportunity to add a, a note or a uh, maybe an email that they sent you or some kind of attachment if you want. If it is an expense claim, it changes to an amount. So you would say what the value was, like 500 Rand or whatever the case might be. This might be a travel claim, might be a petrol claim, uh, might be a cell phone claim, any of those types of claims. The dates when it happened, the note around what it's for, and then once again, you can attach your slip to, to this, this, this claim that goes off to the manager for approval. Uh, second, or, or maybe lastly, in this case, we have a check-in and check-out button. This is connected to the time and attendance component. And basically what it means is the one that's grayed out, in this case, check-out, means that I'm currently checked in already. So I can now, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, it means I'm checked out at the moment. So I can check in because it's available. It tells me I've just checked in. So the time has now started running. If I go do my work and I'm, I'm, and I'm done with whatever I need to do, I can come back and I can say check out. And it will then give me an op option to add a note, what I was busy with. If I can, I can also say if it was billable or not. Maybe for some reason you want to you track the billability of, a of an item. And you can also pick uh, tasks that's been assigned to you. These are assigned by the managers and the project managers in the time and attendance and project management side. So the employee will just have a list that's available to them if there are any that is assigned to them. Um, they won't be able to create any from here. They will just need to be able to pick them. That thing gets um, submitted and it goes, goes into the system. Um, and that ends up under your time and attendance. So if you go to your time and attendance, you can look at my time. Each of these entries will be where you stopped and started an item. Uh, it will show if it was billable, it will say what happened. In this case, the managers checked the people in. That was something else, that was something else. And you can then decide if these things are fine, you will select the ones that you're happy with and you would submit those ones to the manager for approval. The manager will get his notification. They have a different screen where they go in and approve those ones. That will go onto a timesheet report that they can then submit to management. Um, you can also, in this case, this person is a manager as well. So they also have the ability to approve multiple tasks. Uh, and then also you can use your check-in and check-out from here as well. They are exactly the same as the check-in and check-out button. So it's just another interface where you can use that as well if you don't want to go scroll around. Um, and then the last one is creating an event. So if for some reason you could not check in and check out at the real time when it happened, you can come here afterwards and then create a, a check in and check out item uh, with a specific start and end time. And you can go down to minutes and, and seconds, or sorry, hours and minutes. And then same thing, note, say if it's billable or not, and you can also submit that. So if you did miss a check in, you can actually add it again afterwards. Uh, once again, that will be added to this list. You'll select them and you'll be sending that off to your manager for approval. You're also allowed to delete items if you, for some reason, maybe click to double click and you, you created to stop two tasks. You are able to do that as well. Uh, under project management, as the tasks are assigned to you, you get them, you can move them around depending on where they are. They should all start on this side and move towards the end. Um, and you can also see my tasks. You can come here and say book time on that. You can also do a report which will show you that task. I can edit the task. So if I look at editing the task, uh, you'll see some of the information around the task. So this is what was created by management. And you're also allowed to add comments to that task. So let's say this is something you're doing in a project. You could potentially add your comments to this. And that will then be able to be printed as a task report that shows you the report of the task, the details, and all the comments that's on that task. So it helps you manage your project a little bit better. This is all available to the employee as well. I just want to go back here again. So we've looked at the dashboard for check-in and check-out. Um, the COVID vaccination date, this is going to be removed. 
we actually removed the package already. Um, there used to be a COVID module, um, but uh, yeah, there's been no interest in that since the, the last changes. So we are going to be removing that package. So this will be going away. If you are booked on a shift, you would see your next shift date becoming available here. And it's just a little motivational uh, word for the, for the week. Um, it changes every few days. It has recycles through the system. Okay, birthdays if there are any. And at the bottom, I'll show you there's now normal, normally employees would not have this. But if you're a manager, you also have your dashboard, which means your applications that come to you from your employees will all be listed here at the bottom. And that's where you would then quickly access them and approve them rather than going into the, the, the interfaces for a manager. So I'll show you how that works if we, when we get to the manager in, uh, interface. So if I go to my profile, and this is important for employees, you are able to maintain some of your own data. So if you, for instance, get a new phone number or you get a new um, postal address, you've moved, then you can go and update these, these details and you can just click the update button that will then change the, uh, you know, update the record, the actual HR record in the system for you. Uh, you're also able to go and look at your skills and actually create skills. Um, so you can say, I've got a specific skill, you can search for it. There's about 200 and something skills on the system. So you can say, for instance, research, you are allowed to change that name. Although it says research there, it will pre-populate you. You can maybe change that to research in uh, X, Y, Y, Z. Um, so that that will then be your specific skill. It's just a way of, of uh, linking them. Uh, you would say when you acquired that skill, you would say what your level of that skill would be. Uh, you'll say what this description for that skill would be. And if there's some note that you want to keep with that, you can submit that as well. And that will keep a record of your skills as you, uh, that you have in the company. Um, this is important because it matches you to open positions and all kinds of stuff. So it's a good idea to keep this maintained if you can. The HR admin can also get to this and update it from the HR record side. Uh, but from an employee's point of view, this is something you can maintain yourself. Same with the qualifications. Uh, you would add a qualification, you would say what the institute name would be, what course you did, when you started, in it, if you completed it, uh, what the levels are, the educational code, all that type of thing, you can add that in there. And I know the next question is going to be around documentation, uh, so I would get to that. I see there is a hand risen, yes. Yeah, uh, yes, it was, it was just uh, in relation to the, the, the tasks under project management. So I don't know if you want to continue, then we can discuss that in a bit more detail. Okay. Um, I think it's important to, when we do that, is maybe to speak, look at it when the manager role is involved. So you can see how they are created. But, but we can definitely talk about that. Do you want to quickly ask the question first? Uh, okay, yeah. So I think, if you, yeah, uh, if you can please just go back to that, because I think what, what we'd like to know is if, if we create a task, um, essentially it's obviously it's the activity. It's we also want to know. Sorry. Okay. So uh, we want to know um, in terms of the the person who's the champion or the uh, responsible person for that particular task. Um, we want to know the due dates. We want to know um, what the outcome was, so that can be measured. We also want to know things like the matrix. So if there's a, if there's a, a particular action, if, for example, an OKR, um, which is a key result, um, there's a metric attached to it. So how does that, how is that built into the system? Okay, so I think to start answering that question, first and foremost, we are a HR system with a project management component. So we are not a full-blown project management system. I think that's the important thing to remember. Um, when we when we get to the exec or the manager role, I will show you how you can create these things. There's a whole lot of menu items you can't see here, but basically you manage the who's assigned to it. You will create a project. You'll create revisions for that project. You'll create tasks in those revisions with estimations, um, and you set up your team on that side for the project. So so there are certain things that you're not seeing here. Um, I think that might be why it's it's a little bit confusing. This is just a, the, the the idea is that the employee sees as little as possible, so they can focus on just moving the talk, task around and adding his updates to the task as he goes along. Uh, he doesn't worry about creating them or or anything like that. Okay, make sense. 
for now. Yes. Uh, let, let's let's see when we get to the project management side. Also, just a note: there is a way that you can filter on your on projects. So I might be uh, assigned to a specific project and not all of them. So if I choose another one, I would uh, I would only see those ones. I won't see all of them. So you can see there's additional tasks that you're not seeing here. Uh, because they are on other projects. So I can also clear that filter and then see all of them. So there's a, a, a few things around that. Okay, let's first quickly uh, let's get back to the profile. We'll definitely spend some time on the project management when we get to that side. Um, okay, so I did talk about these three, skills, qualification, and work history. Um, work history also gets updated when a person gets a promotion or a person changes his job title or something like that where a position change is happening uh, the old one will stop and it will create a new entry which will give you the new the new job in this case you can see the position is undefined that's because this person doesn't have a, a job title picked on the system um, so it's always important to to pick those ones but i'll show that more in the hr administration part of things okay so that's your work history i haven't touched on job description i'll get back to that in a second uh, there's also a department structure. There's there's organogram in the system which is built up automatically by reporting. Um, so depending on who you report to, the system puts you into a certain level in the company and it will have your manager above you. Now in this case, this person isn't in a specific department. And the branch, we can see uh, in that branch that he's in, these, this is where they fit in and who's above them. And the same thing with the team structure. So they're in a specific team and then they report into the following person and so on. So keep in mind, this is demo data. So a lot of it changes continu <laughs> continuously. So this might not be a nice way of, of presenting the data, but it actually does work if it's a proper company that's set up correctly. Um, and then the last one is your attendance pin. Um, this can be maintained by the employee themselves. That's if you use our external check-in, check-out pad, which is a URL-based um, section where you can create a look like a URL for a specific door, um, and the people that come and go on that door can then actually use that pin to check in. Okay, so that's under attendance, and then lastly, the job description. So job description. The system has the concept of having job titles and job. Uh, let's call it categories. Um, and you can create job descriptions based on a specific um, job title. Then that can be applied to an employee, and the employee can then see their own job title on, or job description on the site here. So that allows HR to automatically get access to their job, let's call it library, um, and they can maintain it in one place, and then you can customize it for a specific person in the team. And I'll show you how that works on the employee side, on the HR side. But... From an employee point of view, what you see over here, if there's nothing here, it means that the HR team hasn't assigned a specific job title to you yet. Um, but the idea is that you can see what your responsibilities in the company would be if this is all populated. Um, okay, my finance, very simple. That is where all your claims and expenses go. Um, so this would be once it's already been submitted and that's now been um, by a team, uh, by your manager, either approved already or not. Uh, you can see the statuses over here, if they've been rejected or approved or processed. Uh, I do need to stress that with finance, it's a little bit different than leave. Uh, finance has got a two-step approval. So the first approval is the, um, is the approval from the manager, and then the second one, which changes it from approved to processed, would be a finance admin role in the company. Uh, and that's only that person can go and do that, or an exec, which is right at the top. Um, and they that means that it's now been approved by a finance uh, accountant or a finance type of person, the CFO maybe, um, that now allows it to be paid out. So although it might show approved, uh, only once processed means that it will actually be able to be paid out or, or applied for. So that is on claims. I'm not going to go into pay slips now because that uh, is for a specific payroll system which is not relevant here uh, if i go to my leave like my finances my leave talks about your leave applications so you can see all your leave applications an employee can go through this and they can go all the way back to where they started um, that's been applied for on this system uh, so you can see if it's loaded it means it's been submitted it hasn't been processed yet it hasn't been rejected so the status is all there i can actually go back and go look at it so i can see okay that's sick leave that i submitted and I'm able to cancel that leave as well. The reason I can cancel it now is because it hasn't been approved yet. Once the leave has been approved, the employee can go and retract the leave. 
I'm not sure if this one will be possible. Yeah, okay. So there's a retract option as well. So you'll see the buttons changes. The difference is that the cancelled leave um, does not uh, does not need you to, to go through an approval process to get the days back. Um, so if you've applied for leave in December and your manager approves it today, the days is taken off your balance today, not only in December. So you will get your minus happening today. So now the days have already been taken and allocated to that leave instance in December. Um, so for you to get those days back, you need to retract it. And that will generate a, a retraction approval that goes to the manager. The manager will approve it and then it will be rolled back and you'll get your amount of days back. If it's cancelled, it hasn't been approved yet, so you can just cancel it. There's no approval required. So that's why there's two different processes. And when I get to the manager role, you'll see on the side here, there's actually two separate menus where you can maintain those things. So that's your own leave applications for the employees. Your calendar, that shows you where your leave was. I'm not sure if there's anything here for this old. But as you can go back in time, either forwards or backwards, and go look at where, um, you know, where your leave was, you'll see them as dots. Uh, same thing with public holidays. And public holidays are set for the country that you are in. So by default, we load the South African um, public holidays. But if for some reason you might have an employee in um, UK, then then you can actually set that employee to UK and they will see the UK pol um, public holidays. The reason for that is when you apply for leave, if there's a public holiday during that time, it will be it will be deducted off the amount of days that you're entering. So if you take five days and there's a public holiday in the middle, the system will just take four days. It won't take five days. So it manages the leave automatically for you. Uh, and then the last one is the My Department Calendar. This basically shows you as an employee everybody else that is on leave um, at the same time in your department. So you can go forwards and go see if the person you need to speak to next week is actually in the office or not. Uh, so that helps you be a little bit more efficient around that. You can also, of course, create your leave from here as well. So, so you have a quick view and a quick access to that leave. So that's my leave. My assets. Um, this is twofold. First part is assets, literally company assets. They get loaded on the system and the company will say, well, you've got this laptop. The laptop is, is assigned to yourself. If that is the case, when you come to my assets, you'll see what has been assigned to you out of the asset registry. And you see your own equipment. You won't see anybody else's. And under my requisitions, the company can load certain things that you are allowed to order from them. Uh, it's normally consumables, like maybe a, a, a cartridge for the printer or a battery for your laptop, or it might be a company branded shirt or something that's branded from the company, something that the company needs to have control over. They can't just give it out. So what this does is it allows the company to add items to that that's able to be ordered and the employees can come to the my requisitions they can click on the create a requisition and they can go pick whatever the company has set up so this might be in this case maybe you need a toner for your your laser jet you'll give a reason to say okay well the one in the office is empty and you'll submit that that will go off to an asset manager in the company where they can then approve it and assign it to somebody to issue that product to you um, so there's a little bit of ordering a system inside uh, my assets just from an employee point of view okay this is a let's call it a larger part of it um, this is my shared documents so there's a bit of information about this that you guys need to understand so firstly the shared documents are things that has been attached to your hr record so your hr record in the system has got a folder that contains all your information um, and part of that would be documentation that the employ that the, the company might store on your behalf. It might be your ID book, a copy of it. There might be a contract. There might be all kinds of things that they would store in that folder. So this is a digital version of that. Some of those things will be shared with an employee and some of them won't. Um, the ones that are being shared, you would be able to see here. The ones that's not being shared, you would not be able to see here. One, if it's shared with you, you have the ability to go download the copy for yourself. So things that we normally say should be here should be things like ID book, uh, passport, that type of thing. Something that you might need a copy of every now and then. And it's nice to be able to come in and quickly get a copy where you're always looking for it somewhere in a lost folder. Um, so that's your shared documents. There's also a organizational shared documents. This one is a little bit different. This is like an intranet. Um, this allows the company to have one place where they put all the company documents, the things you need to have access to. You can come in here and you can come and download a copy for yourself. These would be things like uh, maybe a company newsletter, maybe a HR policy. Most companies use SharePoint for this type of thing. I'm sure you guys know that um, and you probably have one. 
but this is a, a more of a for a company that doesn't have that type of thing they can actually use this as a little intranet to, to share information and documents with the employees then back to notes employee notes is could be anything from an employee later there's different types of, of notes that's generated um, either it will be a note that's that's attached to your employee file uh, it might be one that you need to sign i don't think there are any here that's signed or that should be signed uh, but basically the company could create a note it could be a disciplinary or a warning note as well any type of of note that needs to move between the company and the employee um, and it is it, it actually allows you to come and sign the note so if we view this, it looks something like this. It will have a section at the bottom where all the details about the note is. It will say what it's for, when it starts, when it ends, if it's still active or not. And then there's a little place where you put your signature and there will be like a sign button here at the bottom. Once you've signed it, it will change from please sign to signed. And then you as an employee can also come and download a copy for yourself. Um, it will actually download a PDF and you can keep that in your own files. So that's where employee notes come in. You'll also get a notification at the top if there is something waiting for you to sign. So just keep an eye on that bell. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go into assessments, COVID or review because COVID has been removed. Uh, we still need to take the menu item away. Uh, assessments and review forms are part of talent management and that's not a package that we activate, actively sell at this stage. Uh, there's a very specific um, set of users that use that. Uh, that's why they're there. Um, and then the share documents back button and then performance assessments is the last part. This is where you would do your um, your KPIs, KPIs, your performance assessments. Um, so I will go into more detail around how that would work. But from an employee point of view, uh, you would log into the system. You would come to this tab and you will see, okay, there's something that says completed there. I can now go and complete that. It will open up my assessment. It will give me my first there's a few steps that it goes through. The first one is where you do your own self-assessment. So you can see that I've got create marketing channel. This is the KPA that my manager gave me, uh, KPI. And then this is a half year assessment. There's, there's a few of them. So you need to maybe just keep an eye out on, on the top here to say which what the duration is. Um, you will be able to see them, but you might not be able to complete them yet. So if it's a half year assessment in this case, it will have a due date that the system populates for the manager, which allows you to see the, the assessment before the time, but you can only complete it and actually update your, your, your scores on month five of the six months. Um, so, so, but I'll go into more of the, of the detail with the, the manager side of things. But basically the employee would come in here, you would then go look at what is expected of you, you'll choose what, if the time has passed and it's able to, to unlock like now where i can choose it i'll say i was very good in that and i can complete it that will then send it off to my manager the manager will have a look at it again they will review what you've said they'll add additional information and the review notes they'll also add maybe skills development and training that you require and then they'll send it back to you so you would then get the next step which is then reviewed you can go view that and that will show you the final scores that you get for each of the KPIs and the KPIs. Um, you'll see what the, the manager has given as a skill that needs to be developed. And you'll also see the course that they suggested you possibly do. It might be blank. Your, your, your company might not do this, but it is possible to then say, well, this is a suggested course for the person. And that's all driven through a training module where you can add your training and your suppliers and all that kind of thing as well. And I'll get into that under the HR executive side. So then we have um, the review at the bottom. The manager just said, great job. That will be where he types in his long story to tell you how well you did or how bad you did or what you have to focus on. And then when that comes back to you, you have the ability to do a final feedback from your side to the employee, or to the manager, to say how this went. And once that's done, it will go into reviewed status. So there's a few statuses. Something important to keep in mind, which I haven't touched on yet, is this little support thing at the bottom. If we go say performance management, we can set up that it tells you everything you need to know. So here's the different statuses. So if we go through that, the first one's created, completed, reviewed and approved. And this is more information around how the thing works. So, so if you ever feel that you're lost, please use the, the help widget at the bottom. It allows you to, to also log a ticket if you don't understand something. Uh, so once you've, once you've looked at something, if you go down to the bottom, you can say this is not helpful. And it will actually bring up a, a ticket that you can log and attach a screenshot if you like. So if there's anything that you think isn't working, you're welcome to log a ticket to our support team. Okay, that is performance uh, assessments. 
uh, we've gone through most of the stuff. I think this is pretty much what an employee needs to know. Um, the only other thing that's just general is that here at the top is your where your, your user account lives. Uh, you can go look at your previous login attempts. You can change your password. Um, you can change your profile picture if you like, that type of thing. Um, and there's also a chat in the system. So you are able to add and look for people in the company and you're able to chat inside the, the HR system with your manager, with HR, with somebody else in the company. And I think that is it for a employee side. So I don't know the employees in the session if you guys need to stay or if you want to leave the call. I'm not sure uh, what you guys want to do there. Timothy or Tejo? Um, I think they can still stay, um, Michael. Okay, cool. It, it might actually be beneficial because I think they yes. might see an angle of things that um, will make, make the rest of the system have more, more meaning. Okay. Okay, so in that case, we're going on to the next session. Sorry, Timothy, it looks like you guys are speaking there. Yeah, so just, just on the employee side, so I understand uh, from, from, from the company to the employee, but if I, for example, want to put in a grievance, um, where, does, where do I do that? Or if I want to communicate to the company, besides this normal stuff that you showed to us? Uh, we don't have a feature for grievances. Um, yeah, so we, we don't have that as a feature. It's something I'll, I'll definitely put on the, on, the, on the backlog if you want to. It's something that would, seems to be like a nice feature. We, we have looked at that in the past. Um, the, the feeling of most of our clients was that they want to do that off, off the system. In a, like, you, you get that like, um, talk to Tim and you get that type of lines that you can subscribe to, which makes, that, uh, makes the, the submission of those type of things, um, what do you call it, um, not personal, but uh, what's, the, what's the word I was looking for? There goes my English today. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Does, it doesn't have an identity on it. You, 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 can't, you know what I mean. Um, so we haven't yeah. built that in the system. It could be something we can look at in the future. Um, you mean from yeah. the grievance back from a employee to the manager? Yeah, so I think, I think it becomes important because I think our business is, um, there, is, there is remote work as well. So in some instances, the, the employee might be somewhere far off and he can't come physically to come meet his manager. So it is an online process. And let's maybe, maybe in general we can look at it safer to say in such a case um, that becomes a telephonic discussion, I think, but then that's also defeating the purpose of, of this platform. But it's something we need to, need to look, look at. Yeah, that's, that's normally referred to as an IR system or, or a, a, what they call it, industrial relations. Um, there are systems that do only that. Um, but it's definitely something we can look at. I'll, I'll put that on the backlog. I'm not saying when it will be available, but it is definitely something we can consider. I think that would be a nice feature. Uh, we, we are, our, our base product is an HR information system, and then everything else is built on top of that. Um, so not all these systems are the same. Some of them are vastly different, but I think we cover a lot of the stuff other systems don't. Uh, but also in that same level, we don't cover it in so much detail as a system that only does that, if that makes sense. Yeah, but we also need to be developing uh, grievance policies and procedures internally yeah. on our side. And then people would then have to follow those procedures. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. There is one thing I just think of now that I did not mention. Let me just quickly go back to the employee side. Um, just one other thing. If you are on my documents, the share documents, there is a button here that says upload document. Um, this is available to the employee. The employee can upload their own documents. Uh, it's just to take some pressure off, off HR. The, the only thing is that HR is able to, um, via a workflow setting, be able to either activate or deactivate that. So if HR has disabled that feature, then you cannot, you won't have this button. So that means the only way that the document can end up on your profile is if HR uploads it from their side. Uh, but if it's activated, you have the ability to upload it here. Yeah? There's another setting that goes on top of that where HR would approve or disapprove or reject that, um, that, that document. Uh, you might have uploaded it under the wrong category because there are some categories here that you can choose, like maybe it's a resume or a signed document or something. 
um, then HR might reject it. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, but there's also a feature where HR can switch that off. So if you upload it, it goes straight through and it attaches to your record and it's available there. So just keep that in mind that there is an upload document feature there. That was added for uh, there's some 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 of our clients have got six seven hundred employees, um, and if they had to go upload all the documents one by one from HR side, it would take forever. So uh, they requested to have something like this available. So that is there for the employee. Uh, okay, so let's go quickly go back to the manager. The manager doesn't have a lot more to do. Let me just see that I go yeah manager. Okay, so the manager it looks a lot the same. It's exactly the same interface that you're seeing. You also have your apply leave because you're also an employee in the company. Uh, and you also have my profile. You also have my finance. The only thing that for yours that's different is at the bottom here, you would see applications that came through um, that is awaiting for your approval. I see this manager doesn't have any, but I'll, I'll show you under the exec manager. There is, there is some there. Um, but basically, this whole first part stays the same. Where things change is... For a manager, you have all employees that you have access to. You can get access to a portion of your employee's record. It's not, not really a portion. You can do certain things on that employee. So if you go to all employees under administration, you have the you can only see your own man, your own people, the people that report to you. So you can't see the entire company. Only HR execs and HR managers can see that. Um, but from a manager point of view, so in this case, this person has got two people that's reporting to him. It's actually himself and somebody else. And if you go to their action menu, they can change that password for that person. They can apply for leave on behalf of them. Now, that would be used in a, in a scenario where maybe somebody's off sick and they're actually in the hospital. They can't submit their own sick leave. The manager can do that on their behalf. Or it might be an employee that doesn't have access via the web. It might be a factory worker and the manager then submits leave from, from their side. This is where that would be done. And it's literally as easy as clicking it. You would pick what type of leave you are submitting for that person. You'll fill in the dates. You'll add a leave note and you'll submit it on their behalf. The same process will be followed. The system will send emails out to the person that submitted it. Um, there will also be a mail that comes to the person that has submitted on behalf of them so that to make sure that they also are aware of it. So there will be then three emails, one to the manager, one to the employee, and one to the person that submitted it from here. Um, so just keep that in mind. The manager can also add a note, which is the HR notes that we spoke about earlier. So just to quickly touch on that, you can have the option of choosing which type of note. So it could be a disciplinary note. You would add the date. You would add the end date. Uh, if it's active or not, because it could be a let's say a warning and it might be three months, then after three months you can go to activate it. You can say if it's visible to the employee or not. So there could be notes that the employee would not see. And then the last one is where you can request a signature for that note. And this is where you can put notes in. And you can pretty much, uh, I'll show you, you can, you can put anything in there. Uh, if you take this screenshot for instance. I can even put a screenshot in there. And, and you can add text as much as you like. Um, and you can format it, you can put links in there, you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is how you would build up your note and you would then save that and that will then go off to that employee. So the managers can also get access to the notes for that employee from this all employee section. Uh, and then the last year they can also do the performance management from here. The reason it's there is if you have an employee that doesn't have access to the system, um, and you want to, um, and the manager would like to sit in front, um, you know, in front of the employee and actually work through the performance management with them. Then you would use this this side of it, and you can actually open up the performance review, sit across the seat from them, say, okay, how much do you rate yourself, and finalize the process as if you are the employee with them on the table. Uh, that's the the actions that's available to a manager for an employee. From HR planning point of view, you can. A manager can see the capacity planner. This is the system takes everybody in the company. It rolls them all up into the job titles that they have on their HR profile and then shows you how many vacancies has been catered for and how many employees are actually in that position. So you can see that there's five people for that position that, that you could appoint, but you only have one of them in that position. The system will only show you people or, or uh, positions which either had people in them or has got people in them now. So it won't show you all the job titles. We have got about 2,700 job titles on the system. So you don't want to see all of them. But you can basically go and, um, and look at, at the actions and what you need to do. And then there's also um, the uh, block second page, that type of thing. So a manager's got limited access here. They can't do much under action. They can just see with the capacity. 
from a workflow point of view this might be a little bit more complicated but let's look at this so there are um, promotions that can be done on the system HR would start the promotion workflow and certain of those people might be reporting to a manager the manager would come to this section to be able to then go and review those those approval those um, promotions and then approve them and all that that's more a view from the HR side I'll show you that when we, when we get there as well so that's workflows uh, claims as employees submit their claims they come into waiting for approval it's only the approval one that's there because the finance admin has to do the processing step um, so a manager can only see approval so whatever is waiting for you as a manager to approve you'll find in this section from a claim point of view expenses and overtime from a leave point of view you'll also have access to the leave section so there's that claims and leave which the manager has but not the, the employee you can see a calendar with all your staff's leave on you can also go look at all the approvals that's waiting for you to approve and you can also go look at all the reversals that's waiting for you to approve and this is what we spoke about when we looked at the employee user uh, processed leave uh, this is everything that's already been completed by this manager everything he's approved will then sit in this view um, if for the people that report into him or her um, and then there's also there's a few reports that's available to the manager it will be under claims and will be under leave um, and that will be you can go have a look at these it will be things like historical uh, leave liability values that type of thing is available there per employees um, and the time in attendance you still have my time and my team which is um, from an from an employee point of view it's the same as what the employee sees for the for my time what the manager gets is my team so you can see that there's um, what where your people is booking their time who's who's booking at the moment who's not and you can also go do a, a bulk check-in for your team so if you had a team that might be on site at a client you have 10 or 20 people sitting there and you know they're all in the office you can actually come in here you'll see all your employees and you'll just switch on the ones that um, that are there and then you can submit the whole lot and that the system will then check all of them in so this is like a bulk check-in uh, a good example of this would be a farmer that goes into a field with his uh, team of workers and he needs to check them all in for time and attendance that's where you do your team checking uh, and the shifts I'm not sure if you guys are going to be doing shifts so um, this is quite a lot that we can go into here but I'll just touch on it at high level um, my shifts is ones that you are booked on same as what the employee sees the shift planner takes the shifts that's been created so you create shifts from here and you would say what the shift name is the status who the manager is for that shift um, and you can go through ooh, I see we're running out of time uh, you can select the employees that's on that shift for now you can leave that blank all your departments everything else and you create a shift once a shift's been created you can open up that shift and you can project it forwards you can say copy this shift uh, for the next six months and include weekends or not and that would then go create the shift for into future for you and then the shift plan is then used to be able to um, select who needs to be on that shift it will take all the employees that report to you make them available and you literally have switches per day you just switch on which days uh, the people are going to be to be available in that shift and that will then assign them to those shifts and then the whole shift processing works from there you don't have to do anything to fit into a shift if you book time during the time of a shift the system will automatically take that time that you've booked and allocated to that shift for you so there's nothing else you need to do to be able to book time on a shift uh, a manager also has the ability to go do a query for employees based on who's logged in only his or her employees when till when and that will show pins on the map with their names to say where the people logged in and then once again that is only if they approve to the sharing of their um, their location but i think there might be like a company policy that you would probably put in place to say yes we need you to accept that every time or not um, that's up to the company um, time approvals this is where the manager would come and he would find all the time that's been given to him to approve he would then come and select them and then approve all of them or approve them selectively and whatever has been approved will end up on the reports under the time spent report and will show you literally like a timesheet for the entire company with everybody's names the time they've spent for the month everything um, active employees shows you who's currently checked in and who's currently checked out so it's kind of like a like a, a receptionist would have at the door if there's in and out indicator there um, the system does this based on if you are currently running a task or not so pretty straightforward 
So that is time and attendance. I see somebody's coming in. Okay, time and attendance. Project management with that. So you have your task board, which is the same what we had before, uh, where you can move tasks around and you can add your comments and you can do your thing there. Uh, under tasks, you can also go add tasks here and create tasks. Um, and you can also maintain them, edit tasks, generate the board, and, and delete the tasks. So it's the same type of view that you're seeing as you see on the other board. And then you can also see my tasks, which is the ones that's been assigned to me. Uh, you can actually book time from here on tasks, and that will all roll up into the project management role. So I'll show you that when we get to the next user. Uh, performance management. Okay, so this one is a bit more. I think I'm going to share this from the from the from the HR exec side. I'll just quickly touch on it from a manager's point of view. What a manager gets access to is the KPAs. He can create, he or she can create the KPA, and that will be something very simple: a KPA name and a description, uh, something like "Grow Users," um, and they can then take create a template that they would then um, apply to like like an employee. And I'll show you how that works from the other side because I need to I need to do a few things there. Uh, and they can also see their own templates. So in this case, this manager hasn't created any templates, so it's empty for there. And then we have the completed assessments, which is the ones coming back from the employee that they need to work on. So all the ones that's been created will sit under this assessment, and I'll show you that from the other view as well. So that's that's a little bit more about what the manager can see. It's not a lot different. Um, time and attendance has got a little bit extra things. Uh, the main two differences are claims and leave, and this is pretty much where you'll be managing your employees' leave and claim. And the other important thing to remember is that you have this access to uh, the employee list on your side. Everything in the system is filtered based on who reports to you. So if you go to time and attendance, my team will only be your people. It won't be the other manager's people. So it's important to have the reporting structure correctly defined in the system. Okay, so that is a, a, employee, a, a manager. I'm going to go in as an exec quickly just to show you kind of round off all those other things. Um, I think it's this one. Okay, yeah, okay, so this is the the, the exec user in the system. Um, once again, has a, a home, has dashboards, got the same as everybody else, no difference there. Where the differences come in is everything else. Uh, you'll see under administration, they've got things like all employees, so they can see all the employees um, because they need to maintain the records. And they've got a few additional things on the menu, so they can go edit the profile, so I can open up that profile. Uh, it will then load the, the the record of the person. I can see what their name is. I can see their email addresses, where they are in the company, where they where they're staying, their town, their annual leave allocation, if they are permanent or not. Things like like their salary, their cell number. These are all just quick view items, um, and also what the health of the record is. So I can see that this person doesn't have a healthy HR record. There's some stuff missing. So if I click on that, it actually takes me to the tab, at Record Health, and I can see there are two medium items that's missing. So their postal address and their occupational category is not populated. So this, this helps you to get your, your, your data in such a way that the reporting makes more sense. So keep that in mind. So from an employee record point of view, and I think this is more relevant for the HR administrators, and the executives, you have the employee tab, you've got personal details, and this is everything to do with that person, their ID number. If they are a foreign national, it will be a passport number, uh, male, female, disabilities, everything that you would like to keep from an HR record on a person. Uh, their contact details, this would be the same as what an employee would see on their side. If they update that record under the, their profile, this will also update, it's the same form. Uh, employment information, this has got to do with uh, how they're employed, if they are contract temporary, uh, when they're joining the company or join the company, if they're going to be leaving, maybe they're on a six-month contract, it will have an a, a end date in there as well. We can have a tax status, we can have a, a, who the manager is for that person. This one sometimes confuses people. This is the manager. This means this is the person you report to. They're going to get all your emails. They're going to get all your leave requests. They're going to be approving stuff for you. The HR administrator is meant for a team that's got, let's say you've got a, a company of 500 employees and you've got 10 administrators and each of them looks after 50 employees. You would then configure this over here. And based on what you select there, this your employees on the side it will then be filtered based on that so it just helps you focus on your your employees only um, so that does not mean it's a manager it just means it's a way for the administration of hr to be made a bit simpler 
Then you have your branches, your departments, your operational teams and your companies, because you, you might have multiple companies in, same, in a group. Um, and then you have the generating of a user logon. That would be this person's email address and what type of user they are. They can either be an a, a, a employee, a manager, an executive, which is the same as this, but they can't see the personal details. Um, HR executive, which is the top user, have access to everything. Administrator is almost the same, but they don't have access to the finance menus. Um, finance company admin, that's the person that needs to do the processing of, of a claim. Uh, receptionist is more to do with the time and attendance, so they see that board, so they can see if the person's in or out of the company. Uh, project manager is the one that creates all the project tasks, and then the asset manager is the one that looks after the asset management of things. So if you have, depending on these ones, you have to have somebody in that role to be able to perform those features or those functions. Uh, that's employment. Uh, then we have job details. This will be your employee number, if you're a BE candidate or not, your job grading, uh, your occupational levels. Here's the job categories and the titles. The way it works, it will you will look up a a category first and this list will then be filtered based on what that category is. So if I go to general managers, there I would find things like uh, chairmans, chief audit executive, that type of thing. So they are selectively, you have to choose the one first and then choose the next. Um, that gives you a profile of the person's job details. The remuneration part tells us how the person is being paid, what their salary is, how they're being paid, cash or EFT, monthly, bi-weekly, hourly, if they're hourly, what the hourly rate is. We calculate that based on the gross amount divided by the days and the, and the hours. Uh, and then if they've got a retirement, this is just like payroll information. Um, it's a place for you to store it. You don't have to populate it. It's good to have. Uh, it, does it does feed a few of the reports, so it's always good to have the information available. And then we have the leave cycle details. This is around sick leave and sick days, um, your annual days, your special days. And the first, to make it kind of simple, the first column is how much days the person has available at this point in time. So if I change that to 30 days, if I go to my, so if I update this, I don't think I'm on the, okay, I'm on a different user. If I update that now, it will immediately be available on my dashboard. So this is where you um, maintain the leave balances for each of the employees. Um, this column on the right is how much leave they get in the cycle. So for annual days allowed, you probably have something like 15. This will start with zero. After one month, it will change to 1.25. And the next month, this will be updated to 2.5. And you will occur your leave. The system does that automatically for you. All you need to do is give it the guidance. So for sick days, that will be 30 days and will automatically, after a three-year cycle, set this back to whatever that value is. So it kind of takes care of that for you. Uh, special study and family days, those are all done on a yearly basis. So you might want to have five special days, five study days, and five family days. And the system will then, on the, on anniversary of one year, then go and update those for you. If there is um, a person that does not work a five-day week, like a call center agent, a policeman, security guard, they maybe work seven days a week, then this would be off. Um, and if that is the case, the, the system would not count weekends and public holidays for leave days. In other words, if you put in leave for the five days for the week, but there's a public holiday, it will still take five days off your leave. It won't take four off your leave. So that's a very important switch. It defaults to the normal five-day worker, which is what most people are, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then this is where you can set the occupational or the operational country for an employee. This is all on the employee record. Job description, this all comes in from... I did show that earlier, but you'll see a bit more of it now. If I go to capacity, if I now go open up these things, you'll see that I can edit it. So now I can go go put a job description in for this. It pulls through the, the, the job description, the title, how many vacancies. I can fill in my job description. I can put in my requirements for that, uh, for that role, uh, all the different roles that they have, their skills, the benefits that they would have. Uh, future roles, all that kind of thing, and also training that they might require. So you can go say if there's a specific specific course they need to take, for instance. Um, and that kind of builds up a job description, but this is also used again for recruitment. So when you get to recruitment, if you pick a job title, this will then pull that in as the advert, for instance. So it's always good to keep these things all updated to whatever the current one is. And keep in mind, once you've created it, 
under your employee, it can be edited again. So if I go back to that employee again, I go to my job description, you'll see there's additional stuff in here. I can actually go and update some of this text and I can save it and that will then update the employee's job description or I can just pull in the, gen the default one again from that capacity planning. So that's a, a very important place to be is to make sure that all your job titles are pre-populated there for advertising or recruitment as well as for job descriptions for employees. So that's the first step, that's an employee. Then we have banking details, just so you can run payroll. We have all your documents. So the first one is your contracts. So if you have a contract with the employee, that will go into this section. This is not shared with the employee, but uh, if you want, you can just put the normal contract under other documents, and then that would be available to the employee. You can share those, and I'll show you how that works under document settings. And then you have rejected. This is where the employee uploaded and the HR felt the document wasn't right and they would then reject it. So that would then end up over here. Uh, emergency contacts is your next of kin. Uh, then we have your education, which is the same as what the employee can maintain. That's all the skills, their qualifications and their history. Um, and once again, this one shows a little bit more information to the HR officer than it does to the employee, but it's just to keep track and be able to see what's happening in the system. Uh, you have your employee notes. This is the same as what we've done before, uh, but on the employee record. Then we have all the employees' applications that's been processed through the system. It will be for claims. It will be for leave. So any leave applications for that employee will be visible here. And the same thing with all the claims for that employee. So it's just one place to see one employee. Otherwise, you have to go to claims and go look for an employee. In this case, it will all be bundled per employee. And then the last one is the leave audit information here. So you can see that this person has been getting an annual leave, uh, a curl of 1.67 days every month. And you can see when that happened as well. So this will just help HR see, oh, did this person get their leave this month? Because sometimes you do get that request that, oh, I didn't get my 1.5 days last month. And you can go look and say, oh, yeah, but you, you, you did. It's, it's in the record. Um, so that's just around the leave auditing. Record health we spoke about already. And then performance management is... HR's view of the performance management process that happens between the employee and the, and the manager. So you'll see all the performance assessments that's been done. You'll also see all the training recommendations that the employee or the manager has suggested for the employee. Maybe I'll just use a different employee here quickly. Um, James Johnson, I think this one has got some data. So if I go to performance, so here's quite a few that's been done. Um, actually, maybe a bit too many, but anyway. So here's the training recommendations. I can see they need certain skills developed and certain courses they have to go on when it was recommended. Um, and then HR can come to the training management section and actually go create the training record. So they can say, okay, well, the manager suggested he does something like SQL. So I can go say SQL and it's, oh, I want to send him on that one. Uh, it's a mandatory course. I've already booked them. They start on this day, end on that day. It's there's an expiry notification I want if this certificate expires, and whatever the note is around it, and I can submit that. That then all goes into this training management section, which can be viewed from the training management part as well. I'll show that now. And then the last one is a look at the performance management. So this looks at all your performance management over time. And then it kind of draws you a little uh, area map to show you how the person's scores went and how they Im improved or reduced over time. So this is the, there's some dirty data in here. That's what happens with demos. Uh, but yeah, so you kind of get the idea. I think these ones have a bit better way of showing that. So that's your performance management details as well. That's the employee record uh, in total. You can also create an employee. You can also create, and this creates a full employee. So if I click on that, it gives me the full employee with all these tabs and all of this needs to be filled in to create the new employee. I can also go create a simple employee, which is a single form, um, which doesn't take as much information, but then it quickly creates an employee on the system. You can then go back and then edit the rest of the information to be able to. So this is a way to get people into the system quicker. Uh, and then also the last one is where you create an onboarding. Um, this takes even less information, but once this is done, it sends an email to the person that you're onboarding um, to their email address. They use their email address and their ID number to then unlock the form um, and then complete this form. So they will then fill in the rest of this information. Um, and you can also create some onboarding tasks that gets associated with, uh, with the onboarding process. Maybe the person has to get a username, he has to get a laptop, that type of thing. We filled a few dummy pieces of data in so you can see kind of what it's about. And you can assign those to the people that need to go and do them. 
Um, and that then creates this whole onboarding task with the employee being onboarded. And that all ends up being under the onboarding section here on the capacity planning. So you can see all the tasks that's waiting for me. I'm an HR exec, so I see everything. And then I can go and complete the task or I can awaiting approval or whatever the status might be. And we can then manage those tasks of people that's been onboarded. Uh, and then also just all the onboarding tasks. Okay. That is the main all employees. Your employees I spoke about already. That's the HR admin part. Then we have inactive employees. So in this case, you've got two people that is inactive. So they were added. Um, and then they probably left the company. But we don't want to delete their record. If I go back here, I've got a few options here. I can either delete or disable an employee. If I disable the record, uh, the record is kept. They move to inactive, but they're not they're not being counted as a payable user anymore in the system. So you don't have to pay for them. There's a smaller fee for it. Where for the full employees, there's obviously a different fee for that, and they they will be under the all employees section. Um, document settings. This is how you share documents to an employee. An employee will log into the system, and depending on what's available, so I can quickly show you that if I go to my documents. You'll see on this user, I've got resumes and applications. There's three of them. So those are three documents on the system that belongs to me on my HR record um, that has been shared with from HR to me. If I go there and I go change that, I switch off resumes and I save that. If I now go back to my documents, then I don't have the resumes anymore. So that's how the filtering of documents or sharing of documents work with, with an employee. That's document settings and then reports is where all your reports are for, for HR. So each of the sections has their own reports and they will be classified under their main heading. Um, HR insights, this has got to do, this is visible to the, to the HR executive, uh, but it's also available to the executive role. The executive role is a manager that is in the Exco team. They can see the... Sorry, they can see this, but they cannot see uh, all employees. So they are able to go view the stats about the company um, and not actually go into the HR record. So it's a nice way of, of separating those responsibilities. Um, so the employee the administration starts with all the employee details. So it's the breakdowns of how your employees are, male versus female, uh, contractors versus permanent staff, total salaries, foreign employees, all that kind of stuff. Um, some kind of employees per department, per team, per branch. And then at the bottom, depending on your job title, these are how many people. So in this case, there's five CEOs in this company. And the ones that haven't been defined, there's seven of them that don't have a job title. So that's important to try and address those. Um, then we can go to financial liabilities, which is leave liability per department, retrenchment liability per department, uh, gender breakdown, female versus male. All the diversity details, so who's disabled females per department, disabled males, uh, the gender ethics per, uh, for, the, for the company overall, and then also per department. And then also your applications, your um, recruitment jobs that's being advertised, people that's applied, that's coming to the pipeline, how that to be status looks. Uh, we then have claims. So these are all your claim totals, your overtime totals, how they've been paid out. We look at leave applications, how many has been awaiting approval, how many has been processed, and how they're being used over time. So this shows you a nice little graph over time as it starts adding up the data to show you, okay, December months, we need to get more staff in because most people take leave, whatever the case might be. So you can also see that, and then you can also see where there are sick leave and how much that sick leave costs the company. Um, that, that's calculated based on the hourly rate and the amount of leave taken. And then the last one is the organizational chart. This shows how people report to each other. You can also click on them. You can actually see the details about that person. So, so that's kind of how the organizational chart fits together. That's all as part of insights. We've got a few of these insight sections under time and attendance. You've got a time and attendance insights. Not much data here, unfortunately, for the demo account. Uh, but this will show you how many shifts there are today, how many events are booked for today, because you can book events as well as uh, shifts. Uh, and then also things like late employees who's, who's 30 minutes late. And then if they are absent, who can replace them? Who's in the same job title, same branch, same department? So you can then get potential suggested changes for that shift. You can see data about the shift information and then also the latest records for employees uh, for today. So you can maybe want to check where all your employees have. They're all checked in. You'll see them all on the map all across the country or all across the world, actually. Okay, that's Insights. 
And there's not much here for an HR exec that's additional to what a manager has. Um, so I'm not going to go into that now. We do need to quickly go back to claims. This will be where the processing happens. So the finance admin and the HR exec can see this. So it's already been approved, it needs to be processed. Once the, so if you open up this one, you'll see that there's a process button where if we go to approval, this one only has a uh, approve button. The process is not available. So it depends on what role you're in. So once they've been processed, they go through to the, this last screen. And that then ends up on the remuneration report. So you might have people submitting claims whole month long. At the end of the month, you can go run this, this report and it will show you all the processed ones added up per employee the total for that as well as the total um, overtime and expenses that has been claimed and processed for that employee so this is nice for you to use for pro for payroll as well uh, leave is pretty much the same uh, okay new thing for HR is the company so we start with the company details things like contact numbers this is where you can add your logo for the company that type of thing uh, we also have settings that the system needs to know uh, so we have tax numbers, UIF numbers, page you earned, VAT numbers, all that type of thing. Um, also the occupational country that you that you work in. And then we also have the leave for fitting that you can activate or deactivate for your company. Uh, and then the date that that needs to run on. Um, and there's also this feature about ICS files. If you switch that on, every time an email goes out to the employee to... Um, to say leave has been approved, there's an ICS file attached, which they can double click and it will add it to the calendar then. It also goes out to the manager as well. Um, I would suggest leaving that off. It does send a lot of emails. Um, you might get, get bombarded with emails. So that's an option to switch on and off for settings. Uh, we have the company structures. So that's all the branches and the descriptions and the addresses for them. The same thing with all the departments and the same thing for all the organizational teams. And then also for your companies and the buttons to create those. So you might have one or two or three companies inside your group and they're all on the system and this is how you would classify those. Public URLs, um, this is something new. It's still kind of in development. There's a whole lot of styling and things that's being done on this. But basically what it comes down to is you can open a portal for the company which then gives you access to time and attendance. So you can drill down from here and get all your departments all your branches, all your access points. So if I go into that department, then it will load a list of, did I click that right? It will load a list of all the employees in that department and they can then put this on a tablet at reception and as people come in, they can check in and they can check out. This is where the pin is used that we have that I showed you under the employee record where they can maintain their own check-in pin. This is where that pin is being used. I'm going to go back again. So we also have access points. You can also uh, create specific gates or specific doors if you like. That's also being tracked in the system. And then you have all your vacancies as well. So all your vacancies in the company will be advertised here. And people can then go open them up and actually go and apply for a vacancy. Um, if you already have, if you're in the company, um, you can only see your own company's vacancies, of course. So you would then put in your, if you are an employee, if you click the apply button, you'll just go in. Um, it won't it won't ask you anything else. If you're not an employee, so this could be advertised on your website as well. You can also change the branding. You can change this to your user, your company logo. Um, you can put this on a, via an iframe onto your company and uh, people from outside can apply. And if they, they are already with us as a candidate, which is a different view that you guys don't see here, their profile gets brought into the system and they apply for the position. If they don't exist yet, the system will allow them to then create a profile and then they'll go into your pipeline for uh, applying for that position. So that's the vacancies. And then the last one's just around shifts. We're actually going to remove that for now. Um, so that will probably be away from tomorrow. It's not needed at this stage. Okay. So vacancy portal is the same. It just looks only at vacancies and these are your individual links for each of the access points or the doors or everything that you do. So that's where the public URLs fit into the picture. Um, and then you have the organizational share documents that you could get at the employee side as well. So that's all these documents. You maintain them from the company side. Billing, you don't have to worry about that. That's where you get your invoices from the system. Uh, training is where you can see you load all your service providers on the system, um, like Udemy or whoever else gives you training, and that contains certain information around them, like 
ach, their BE levels and, and who the contact person is there, who the courses are that they offer, etc. So that's all maintained from here. And then also all the courses. On a course level, you can also say what the course costs, a detail about that course so that you have the details in here. And then you have your final training one, which shows you all the training that's already been booked in the system for your company um, through history. Um, and you can then quickly go here and say, well, who's, what's Frank doing? Okay, so there's three, three courses allocated to Frank already. Um, that type of thing. And there's also some reporting under um, administration for training, who's doing training. So if you look for that, it's under administration. Uh, time and attendance we spoke about already. Assets, here's the asset registry. The asset manager will be able to see this. So this is where you load all your assets. They quite there's quite a lot of detail that you can add. What the what the asset cost? How many years do you depreciate it for? What location it's at? If there was a work order number around ordering it, that will go in there. The condition of it, who's it assigned to? Is it a parent or a child asset? So if it's maybe it's a laptop and you've ordered some RAM additionally, then the RAM will be a child of the parent asset, which is the laptop. All that type of information gets stored in the system. Uh, then you can also see of those who doesn't have a, a person assigned to them, that will be unallocated assets, the ones that have been assigned and who they are assigned to. And then also if there's any of them that has expired already. So you might have a contract that you load on the system as an asset, a two-year contract, and you would then be notified at the end of the contract period to say this one's expiring. So it's just a nice way of keeping track of all your assets. Being It could be IP as well. There's a whole lot of, of different things you can put in there. Um, and then the procurement is the stuff that the people can order, the, the different products that could be ordered. This is where that gets maintained by the, HR, the, by the asset manager. Um, and then all the requisitions that has been submitted. So here's an example. So Frank has asked for a laptop. I'm going to say I'm happy. Let's give him this laptop. But I also want to give this, I want to ask that person has to go and submit it. And I will process it and then I can submit that one. And that will create a task. It will go to the person that will then need to go and uh, can issue that laptop. Uh, and then also all the stuff that's been already been approved, it was assigned to everything around that, and then some reporting around that as well. Uh, performance management, okay, this is what we spoke about earlier. So where our performance management is different is we start off by creating OKRs. Um, I, I know, Timothy, you mentioned the, the key um, areas that you're looking at. So what we do in HR Sim is we create a a section where you can define your OKR. So forget about the old way of doing performance management. Well, not totally forget about it. Bring it with, but remember it. But the, the way the process starts is the, the executive team goes away on a strat session. They go look at what their strategies, they define their vision, their mission for the, for the period ahead, what the, the key re outcomes is going to be, um, you know, certain certain um, action plans, all that type of stuff they go and define. And you will then go and create these years. You'll have certain goals that's been created and so on. So to give you a nice overview of how this looks, so this shows you how they fit together. So at the top, we've got a vision. Then we've got a, a mission that hangs off that. We've got a certain three certain goals that we want to achieve. And this can be added and, and changed. You can have as many as you like. Um, and then from that goal, what's the, the action plan for it and what's the tactics to reach it, that type of thing. So you can connect them to each other and then define your OKR. So that's kind of, you don't need to do this, but it is very helpful if you do because the reporting then becomes a bit more rich. Um, so you've got your OKRs that you define. Then you go and create the KPAs like I mentioned before. So HR can do this or a manager can do this. And these would be KPAs that shared throughout the organization. So any manager that logs in can see all the all the KPIs. So the nice idea behind this is that HR can define maybe five or ten very key areas that they want to look at, and they can uh, make them available to all the managers to use. The managers will then go to my template, which is what I had before. I didn't have any templates, so you couldn't see them, but yeah, you can because I'm an exec, so I can see everything. So I can create a template to give you an idea of what that is. I would go and choose a position. So I'm going to say executive CEO. And I'm going to give it a template name. I'm going to say, this is all for your own internal use. You can maybe have a code that you want to use. Uh, we do need to have a template name though. And then what type of template? Is it the an annual, a half year, a quarterly, a monthly, or a weekly? So depending on how you want to do reviews, you can choose which one you want to do. If it's annual, it will create the KPA. It, you can then assign it to an employee and it won't be available for the employee to assess himself until month 11, if you choose annual. If you choose half year, it will become available on month five, etc., and so on and so on as it gets shorter. Um, you will add a description for this template, 
and then you go create you say add a kpa and we can choose those kpas that's already been created there so i just say grow a user i can give it a kpi which is maybe just also just grow a user base um, and by 10 percent, let's say 10 percent and then we can say okay well you know what that combination is connected to the following okr and that is increase the number of customers or in in this case maybe we can actually go to the grow oh we don't have one for users oh, well, we have customer base by 25 percent. that's an action plan so you can create you can link this back to your okrs and once that's all done you can add some more you can add 10 of them here or five of them depending on how much you want to do you then create a template and this is a template and that template is available to other people to use as well or actually to you to use for your stuff so you can then go and say okay i want to use this half year one i will click on it i'll say go and assign this to an employee it brings up the the one that i've configured and i can now go choose who i want to send this to i can say well this has to go to james johnson because it's a half year it's now already automatically adding six months until from today into the future where it's due um, and that will also you can actually go change that if you like you might want to change it to maybe two months earlier because that's how what your company policy says and you'll create the assessment that will then kick off the process of sending that to the person that person will get his notification he'll log into my documents he'll go to assessments and he'll go take that top one and he'll go and complete it so that's kind of how the process works and it goes back to the manager as i mentioned earlier Manager gets it under completed. He then reviews it, adds the skills and the training, adds his comments around the review, and sends it back to the man to the employee for the final um, review. Where the employee then says, "Okay, I feel this was fair, or it wasn't, or whatever they want to say," um, and then send, closes it and sends it back to the manager. Once that's all been done, it can be downloaded. So I can go download a copy of this. The employee also has the ability to download it, as well as the HR execs. Um, and they will then get this report that shows them their scores and what was discussed. The, you know, the manager comments and all that kind of stuff is in the system as well. Um, so if I go back again, so that's and then the nice thing is once you go, once you've started doing that process, you can go to the insights again and start looking at your OKRs. So you can see how many you have, how long they are in in total. On average, it's normally like almost six months. How they're being used. So a lot of focus is being put on goals, not as much on the vision. Um, because that depends on how they are allocated to different performance assessments and then also over time there's a few a bit more information around how they're being used for which months and then how that's how they're performing so we can see that yes the goal for revenue um, is the one getting most attention now you might have felt in the strategy session that your your vision might be the one that needs most of the attention so now you can start directing where the kpa should be be focusing by noticing what where they're actually being used for now so so this is a very important thing for xcode to keep uh, an eye on and that's why the xcode team can still see this report as well uh, and then we have performance results this is more down to kpa level and kpi level you can see uh, the, the average scores in total and then you can look at the employees as well so we can also go into the top performers this will be based on a position so in this single position James Johnson is the person that's done the best. He's got an average score of 85.75% and he's the highest in that position. So although there might be 10 people there, he's the one that's done the best. And at the top, what we do is we do a scatter graph based on how the people performed. We take the salary and the score, we divide it by each other and we get a value. And that value then places the person on the map. So you can start looking at outlying cases. In this case, that employee is getting a lot of money, but he's not performing that well. This one is kind of in the middle. And that one. so it will give you like most of your staff will sit in the middle and you can then start focusing on the outlying cases. Um, that's performance management. How much time? We like way over time already. And I apologize for that. There's just so much to show in this thing. Okay, last one really quickly. Um, uh, this is recruitment. You create vacancies, um, which you which you create in the system. Uh, let me see if I can see if I could edit one of these. Uh, this is a vacancy. It pulls the details through from the job title that I showed you under capacity planning, uh, with their key requirements, responsibilities. So this is all linked to each other. Once you get you create a vacancy, you can then also generate public URLs for that. So you can take this URL and go put it on maybe in an email somewhere to somebody. And you can use this one on Facebook and that one on LinkedIn and this one is other. 
Um, and what that does is as it's out there in the world on LinkedIn and people click on it, it actually gathers that information and shows you how people are looking at those links of yours. So you can start seeing which ones are, you know, which jobs are doing best and which platforms. So in this case, direct is using a lot, is doing a lot better than social media. So it helps you kind of track where you're going with your, with your adverts. Uh, so that's your vacancies. You can also see who's applied for them by looking at the um, applications. Oops, sorry, demo account. Uh, there's a different place where you can actually see this under applications rather. Yeah, I think this demo, sorry, demo account always has bad data. Um, so you can see two, two places. There's external, which is people coming in from outside, which is like candidates. And then internal is people that work for your company. These are employees that's applied for it. And we can see that in this case, um, James Johnson applied for a manager position. He also applied for an accountant and a CEO. These ones are just applied, but this one's been processed already. So as you take the person through this, this process, you click the right button for the next step and they would then move through the process. You can see all their details. You can look at their education. You can see their skills matches based on what the position requires and what the person has on his profile. So that's why it's important for you and your teams to keep your skills updated in the system so the matching can happen better. Um, once you get to this point, you can now say, okay, I'm happy with this guy. I want to interview him or I want to reject him immediately or I want to process him through to the next step. And then I can ask him questions inside the system. And there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, once that's done and you want to make an offer to somebody, I see this is good. Uh, sorry about that. Demo accounts are never right. Um, but, but what, what uh, offer letter is at the end of the process, when you decide to, in a, to appoint a person, uh, and we saw that under applications, um, we can then go and say, let me just see if I have one of these that I can actually, I don't have an apply yet. Um, so if I appoint somebody, a mail goes out to them they get to be onboarded um, automatically through the system, as I showed earlier. And then they also um, get the option to get an internal uh, uh, onboarding um, uh, offer letter that is a standard template that we use that will just put your details in there that the person can sign online and it will then be stored inside their contract folder. Um, so that also happens. So that's where you'll see all your offers. Uh, and your job postings is around that as well. So this is your internal board as well. So this shows you all the open positions inside the company. You can manage them. And the only thing that's different for HR is they also have the organizational email, which is a bulk email that you can send out to the company and you can go process them based on who you add. So you can either add individual employees or you can add individual teams or you can add individual departments or any combination of them. And then you would add your details to this and you would send it off. And it will be an HRC mail that goes out to everybody with your information in and your signature at the bottom. Um, so that's like a bulk email to the employees. If you want to inform them maybe of a new policy or something like that. So I think, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else to add at this stage. Any other questions? Maybe I know this has been a long session. That's been like an hour and a half. So I hope there is still people out there that's awake. Say <laughs> cool, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Michael. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's been a it was a long session. Yes. And it's uh, almost information over here. I think, but the the, the point is. We've got the recording for some yes. of these um, um, different levels applied to different people. Yeah. So I think the recordings will then be able to help us so that if a person has got a specific area or a specific level, they can just refer to that section. Yeah. Um, I know yours, yours was comprehensive, but I think that will help us in that regard. Yeah. Um, I think it's just good, yeah, good to know what's in the system and, and kind of at least where it is. Mm. Yeah, so I think it will be helpful once we get that um, that video, so we can be able to store it on this. If, if actually, if you can make it available on the on this on this platform, so the guys can be able to access it and use it uh, as appropriate. Yes, we. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I've got those errors that popped up. I'll see if I can so we can cut those out, <laughs> make it look a bit better. But yes, we actually do have a few videos on the on the website as well. Once there's one for an employee, uh, there's one for a performance management and there's one for I think the HR exec role um, so there are there are some videos on the website under video tutorials but but I will make this one available to the team That's right.
I think, I think Trevor, for me, uh, my takeaway is that I think we just also need to set yourself, myself, uh, the HR team, um, so at least we can start populating some of this, um, the rules and the policies that are required in order to, to make this a bit more seamless. Yes. No, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot in here. It, it, it's a lot bigger than you think, most of the time. <laughs> it's, it, it is very big, uh, but I think it's a very comprehensive system. It's a very smart one. Uh, a question that I have, though, uh, you mentioned in the beginning that a document can be rejected, a CV yeah. can be rejected. What would those reasons be so that we upload correctly from the get-go? Uh, well, it depends on what HR decides. Um, so if I go to all employees, just open up uh, one of these. So they'll all end up in this in this folder on the side. I actually, you're asking a good question. Let me go to workflows quickly. So, so from an HR manager, HR exec point of view, let's rather say use that word. There's, you'll see there's a lot more here than there is under the manager and the employee. So there is a separate one for document approvals. So we can see here that it's uh, these documents that's been uploaded. I can go open that up. I can go download it to get a copy. If I process it, I just have the ability to reject it. I don't, there's no, um, it will be up to what HR decides. If you reject it, it doesn't go away. It moves to that rejected folder on the employee side. So you can then go back there and reprocess it if you've changed your mind. But you can actually go and, um, and change. Maybe they just maybe they, they used personal identification rather than signed documents. You can actually go and override that and, and then upload it anyway. So you still have the flexibility of doing that. So that's document approvals. Just to touch quickly on the others. Provisional approvals is where you, um, if there is any that needs to be approved. Let me just show you what the other ones are. Here's the job offers. Yeah, so there's definitely something wrong with this, this account and the, on the offer side of things. But let's leave that one now. Uh, onboarding of employees, these are people that's waiting to be onboarded. That's already from the outside, the people's full in their details. It's sitting in the queue and waiting. But I want to quickly go to this process part. So if we look at promotions, what this does, it's not, no, that's process. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this goes and fetches. Now I'm an exec at the moment, so I can see everybody. If you're a manager, you only see the people that report to you. Once again, you'll see the person, you can see their job category, their position and their salary. So if I go and I go change this guy, I give him an increase, I'll take him up to 20,000. You'll see it shows here that I've modified it. So I can now say, okay, I'm happy with that. I've given him an increase. Let's, but I don't want to actually process this one. I accidentally did it so I can go and ignore it if I like. Or I can just leave it off and just save. So this is a way to quickly go and change people's, like do a bulk salary update for everybody or a bulk um, job title change or whatever. This is where you would do that. And then under your, uh, also if you want to change people's branches, their departments, maybe they've, they've transferred, that type of thing can also be done, yeah? And then lastly, under workflow settings, you've got the ability to say, employees can upload their own documents. If that's switched off and you save it, that button goes away, then they can't upload the document. So this is where you switch it off. And then also here you can say, if that's off and you save it, it will just upload automatically. HR doesn't have to approve it, but you can switch that on again. And then HR will have to approve each and every one of them. And they'll come to the approvals to do that. Uh, the promotions is here as well. You can say I'm, a, I'm allowing approvals. And if I want that as a one step, two step or three step approval. And then the last one is the time management. If you don't want um, all that, that, that time entries that gets created that needs to go onto the timesheet. If you don't want those to be approved before they go through, you can actually change the, this to no approval. And then they will automatically, as the people book them, they'll just go straight through onto the timesheet report. Um, so that the, these are the places you can disable that. So to get back to your, your question, you can reject them for whatever reason you feel. Uh, the system won't reject it. You actually need to make the decision yourself and then reject it. Um, and then also I want to know if you had a module for, you know, roles, rights, benefits, management, um, so that we know if we're onboarding someone, we, we know what roles are allocated. So if that person is leaving, we know what roles we need to remove from them. Uh, let me just try and understand that a little bit better. So if you're saying the role, do you mean access to the system or do you mean like a role and responsibility? Uh, 
not access to, to, to systems, if we're using a, a car to get into the building or whatever. So we know that there's a list of things that we need to collect from employee when they leave, and we can put that into the system as well, that we collect this, or we hand it out. Okay, so that would probably fit under asset management. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can add all the things like a card, all that kind of stuff, you can all add as assets and they could then be assigned to that employee. Um, what we normally do is if a person is onboarded, you get the tasks, we just think we haven't, we haven't done an offboarding yet, that is something that's planned for the future. So when a person resigns, you would have tasks like you have with onboarding, I can create tasks when this person leaves or, or joins, I can then add tasks that will be need to be ex executed when a person leaves. Uh, we haven't done that part of it yet. There's still, I mean, there's we we delivering new releases. There was a release delivered this morning, so it's literally once twice a week we're actually pumping out new requirements. So um, it won't be long before they're there. But we we do actively develop on this. And this is the South African system. It was developed here in Cape Town. It's as local as you can find. There's, none of this stuff is outsourced overseas or to anybody outside our our company. So, so maybe that's a good point that I haven't touched on yet. Um, the company that you're speaking to is actually called Data Simplified. We are a development company, um, and we uh, consult in the in the data space. We are very much involved in um, financial institutions like banks. We do a lot of IFRS and um, and that kind of reporting, AML reporting. That's kind of our key key function and then this is a solution that we built over time and that we are selling in the market and maintaining and upgrading the whole time oh okay and i was asking specifically with with, with the financial institutions in mind yeah. because uh, i think just um example would be like standard bank that finds itself under so much sort of like attack and sabotage because they released the IT department but did not uh, revoke rights and roles into the systems and networks. Yes. That's uh, yeah. the reason that I'm asking this question if you do have that. And no, if no. you do have it since you say you can build it, if that can be a, a, something that's automated, so when you're off board, Everything yeah. just gets revoked automatically. Yeah, that's that's very that's very intensive from a, from a API point of view because you I, I don't know I've, I've got a thousand companies that use the system. Each and every one of them have different systems in place. So having things that automatically disable might not be that simple to achieve. Um, but you know, at least we can maybe bring in a set of tasks that could help with offboarding. Mm. As I say, we, we continuously develop on the system. So we're always looking at, at new ideas and new things. There, there's a board here next to me that's got 20 things on it <laughs> that needs to be implemented in the next couple of months. So there's a lot of things going on. And you'll see new things every now and then. We normally mail all our clients and we say, okay, this was added, this was added um, to, to help with certain things. Like inactive employees, this didn't, didn't exist like a month ago. Um, you had to go and actually go and delete an employee if you wanted to get rid of them. So then one of our clients said, listen, but we want to be able to disable because they might come back in six years from now or they might come back in a month because they contract us. Uh, can we just then, uh, you know, activate them again? So so there's, we'll definitely be adding certain new features. I'll add the onboarding uh, task here as a, as a note. Okay, I think that... Yeah, I've got a, I've got another meeting in 15 minutes. We've taken a lot of time, so I, I, I do think if there's anything else, you're welcome to uh, to send through a few questions, maybe, um, and we can get those answered. Or if there's anything you yeah. want to ask now, then we can take it from there. I mean, uh, happy with that. I'm not sure if there's anything from your side. But I think we're happy to 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 play around with the system and and also use the videos as as suggested. Definitely, I'll be sending that through later as soon as we've cleaned them up a bit and have them in some presentable way. Couple, maybe a couple of hours, maybe maybe worst case tomorrow, I'll probably have that to you. Okay. Yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure, guys, and uh, and enjoy the rest of the day. Then, and I look forward to your questions. Um, Hi, just with. one question from my side. Sorry, sorry. Just one 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 question from my side. I wanted to know: uh, Can one employee have two roles? No. Does the system allow them for? No, it's only, okay. it's only it's one more. role. What what I didn't mention though um, is if you, uh, and it's actually quite important. If let's say you are an executive, let's say you're you're a manager. Uh, let me with the easiest way probably mm -hmm. show it over here. So if I go to the organisational chart, if if this person is a manager, 
this employee user, that one is a manager. And above him is another manager and above him is another manager, like in this case. This person will only see Shira below him. But if this person okay. goes in, they will see this one and that one. If this person goes in, they'll see that one, that one, and that one. So the idea is that if this person's on leave, his manager can take over when, if need be, because he does have access to the approvals and whatever else needs to happen. So one level up is always, actually we go two levels up in total. We have three levels from top to bottom that we allow for. Um, so we'll always, you'll always be able, if the manager is stepped out, the exec above him can, can still take over and do whatever needs to be done on the system on behalf of that manager. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That ties in with your question. That's why I just wanted to mention that I didn't mention okay. it earlier. All right. Thank you. And then there's no option to sell leave, like sell your leave days. <laughs> That's <No>. interesting. <laughs> yeah, we should start like a we should start like a marketplace. <laughs> a definitely not. Okay. <laughs> okay then. All right. Thank you. The, okay. the problem is the person that buys it from you needs to be able to do your job as well. That's a problem. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay.